as he said, my name is Hirsch Saha and I'm born and raised right here in Wellington. And today I find myself talking to you about extraterrestrial real estate. It's like they say in real estate, remember three things, location, location, location. <laughs> well, let's start by looking at the current property market. I'm sure a lot of you will agree with me when I say that it's pretty unaffordable. You know, for something that is so basic, something that we all need, it seems to be just so out of reach. So why has this happened, especially in the last 10 years with the property boom? Well, there has been population growth, especially in a city like this, Wellington, where already there was a very scarce amount of flat, buildable land. So as you can imagine, prices went up, perhaps greedy landlords and you know, developers claiming too much, and there's also an environmental impact of that. But hey, isn't that how business works? Maybe an awful truth you don't want to admit to, even if you do push up the prices for others or deplete the environment. Isn't that how you get rich, especially in real estate? So I thought to myself, could I be ethical in real estate, not take advantage of others, not push up prices for others, even be environmentally friendly as well, so good for future generations, but still make money at the same time, maybe not an obscene, am obscene amount, but some? Well, after a lot of searching, I finally found a solution, and now I believe, yes, I can be all those three things at once. And how you might ask, well, the answer's already been revealed, basically. But that is through selling extraterrestrial real estate. By definition, it is simply real estate on other extraterrestrial bodies outside of our planet. So it could be the moon, other, other planets like Mars, Venus, or anything else which is out there. As you can see, but the moon, Mars, and Venus are the most popular ones. You know? <laughs> completely out of this world. <laughs> but seriously, it takes all the boxes. Very little environmental harm, because it's not even on Earth. You know? <laughs> Extremely affordable, because there's so much of it available, therefore affordable. And I think it's pretty original, so exciting, therefore a lot of fun. I know you're all thinking, wait, how can you do this? Is this legal? Is this legitimate? You can't just claim the moon and sell it acre by acre. Well, it is a very interesting story, so let's have a look at it. Basically, it all starts in 1967 with the International Space Treaty, which clearly stipulates that no nation nor government can simply just own the moon or other extraterrestrial bodies. In 1980, Dr. Dennis M. Hope came along and saw a loophole in this. He said, but I never said that no individual or corporation can do so, so he laid a claim and created the Lunar Embassy. Well, what does that mean? 30 years later today, they're doing exceptionally well, and they're very well recognized all around the world with millions of people purchasing off them. And they pose a very interesting topic, which is how is this really different from real estate here? Because even when you buy something here, the fact that it's registered on database and well recognized, that gives us its value. Same thing with that. They did say a novel gift though, that's just to stop any frivolous lawsuits. But other than that, from the recognition, that's where the value comes from. Then you might ask, okay, but why own something I can't even touch? Well, you know, it can be potential prudent investment. Already prices have gone up and they could go up further, especially as more people become interested in it. There could be utilization one day as well. So who knows? But this is basically what the deeds look like. When one purchases, they actually do get their own certificate of title with their name on it, a description of the property, where it's located, and also the associated codes, covenants, and restrictions. That one is for the moon. This is why they look for Mars. They look pretty neat, don't they? <laughs> I, I, I didn't design them myself, but I wish I did. <laughs> and also for Venus as well. <laughs> if any of you want, you can see me afterwards. I'll go up, I'll give you some cards or whatever you like. So the very basic rules you might be wondering, as written on there, is that they can be built on, but you know there are no taxes to pay apart from the preliminary taxes. Others can land or traverse on them, and you can't charge them for it. But there are no ongoing expenses. So once people have it, it's theirs forever. And I certainly think, you know, looking forward to the future, who knows what it may bring. Could be, be me up there one day, could be you up there. But hey, I think nothing to lose and everything to gain. I really think, you know, all of us should always aim for the stars, because if we miss, we're bound to land on the moon. Thank you. <laughs>